another game and we'll be talking about VAR again, unfortunately. Your, your thoughts on what occurred out there? Press play, innit, for me. Because I've said it all along, Anna, that, that the percentages that we're looking at to improve the game to, to, to what's happening uh, to everybody is are not big enough. That's what I think I must have about eight or nine goals over this weekend, innit? Uh, you know, I look at, you know, Francic ball to Puki, brilliant bit of play, fantastic finish. Nobody knows where they're drawing the lines from. They're all blurred. It's not going back onto his foot where it left. Nobody's showing anything. Goal rule, ruled out. I'm, I always thought that this was this all the all the rules that we brought in, and you know can't tackle anymore. So that's about protecting and entertaining, and making sure the best players uh, can do their stuff. Um, but obviously they can't if they make. If they pass the ball brilliantly like Flake did, and Mousset gets in on a brilliant run, Branchich passes the ball yesterday, and Puki gets in a brilliant run and finish. So I've said my bit about that, but it'll it'll all just get brushed brushed aside. But there it is. And the, the second goal. Oh, sorry, there. The yeah, goal, yeah, the there first, first, yeah, the first goal, the game changer. You know, um, and it did change change the game. There's no doubt about that. From my opinion, I'm not saying that we would have gone on to win it. But we felt comfortable. The shape of the team was good. Out of possession, you know, we weren't going to just come and make it easy for Manchester City. You've seen the team that they picked. They showed us that respect, and we showed them the respect that we weren't just going to, you know, uh, turn up and swap shirts and take pictures. We want to make it difficult for for world class players, and I think we did first half, uh, and even the first ten or fifteen minutes of the second half. But. You know, the rule came in as we saw in the summer when we went and we had that pre-season game and everybody's going, what's happening here? Yeah, that's that new rule that somebody's brought in when it hits the referee. Um, but he's affected the game. Um, I've got to say he invited me into his, 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 uh, his room afterwards and we had a private conversation uh, and he was very, very honest and open about uh, what he said to me. Um, whether the, uh, the PG, LMO or whatever it is uh, comes out and says something, that's, that's up to them. But I've got to say... The referee was open and honest about uh, what he th what he thought about that. I'll leave that between me and him. Put two and two together though, and uh, and you're going to get the uh, the the answer. Um, and he's affected the he's, he's affected the game. I, I I believe he just blows up. Um, I don't think that uh, there would have been a big debate about it through uh, from opposition players or or manager. What I will say though, if it happened on the other way around. Um, I think there might have been a little bit more to say than what I'm saying about it now. Chris, can you just... Hello, over here. Here, here. Sorry. Just to be absolutely clear, did it hit the referee or not? It didn't seem to... No, I don't think it, but he, right. I think he, he sort of... Uh, well, obviously, you've seen it. You, you know, make your mind up. He's, he's right, right in the mix of it. And it, does, he, does he affect the play? Does he affect John Flake? Does he affect the play, the bodies around him? And I'm not saying he should be invisible and float about the place, but... He's played a part, you know. Do do we want referees playing a part in 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 an opening goal? Um, you know, just as much as do we want people to to draw silly lines on and blurred lines and on feet and arms and elbows and and hands and and when it comes off the end of the foot, do we want people to do that? No. So there you go. You've already mentioned your first half performance. Uh, one player in particular, John Fleck. What were your thoughts on his performance? You, the pass to Moose was fantastic and he seemed a really good player today. Yeah, I thought all, all my players were good. Um, they stuck to the plan. You know, you have to be disciplined and you have to be selfless as well when you play like that. You can't break the chain and we did. And we didn't, sorry. None of them did. Um, but I always think that you can't come here and just sit and play like that for, for 95 minutes. Um, you know, you have to have something going the other way, and I think we did. Possession stats, passes, million passes, and you know they're, they're brilliant the way they move about the ball about, and the quality of the players is just fantastic. And uh, you know, uh, love watching Manchester City how the way they go and how they work and how they play. Uh, the attitude of the manager, you saw his attitude when the first one went in, uh, and especially the second one, it was a big, big relief. Um, I should imagine he does that if he's if he's having a five side or a game of pool, so he's a winner. Um, but I thought we got the balance right, and I think we created the clearer chances. Billy Sharp's header, Mousset, two or three, John Egan's header. 
<coughs> and always when you come to these places or you play the likes of your Liverpools and your, your Manchester Cities, when the opportunity comes, you have to take them. And unfortunately, we didn't. If we did, obviously, it gives us a, a better chance of winning. Uh, I'm not saying that we would have won, but obviously, you know, you have a, a, a percentages go up if you score a goal. Hi, Chris. Just a quick question on uh, John Lundstrom. He missed out today. <coughs> How close was he to making the team? Uh, he turned his ankle, um, he wanted to stay on the pitch against Watford, which sort of epitomises what all my players are about. They're really disappointed in there. Um, uh, that's a sign for me of the character of the players and what they've got under the shirt. They didn't, didn't go out the back door. You know, it's a proud record we've got in terms of away performances. I suppose you'll look at it and if we are going to get beat, you know, let's get beat going out the front door, which I think we did. Um, we're disappointed that John wasn't available. He turned his ankle and made it possibly uh, a little bit worse than maybe it would have been if he'd have come on, but he didn't want to come off against Watford. Um, and we'll just assess him and give him every, every opportunity. Even though I thought Mo Besic, first game of the season in that, a little bit of an unfamiliar position, did well. Um, and Callum and, and, um, and Lease were my two other changes. And I thought out of possession they were great. And I thought in possession they caused a threat to... Uh, to a, obviously an outstanding team. Uh, Chris, what's your emotions after finally that unbeaten away record coming to an end? Uh, as a manager, it is really difficult to take positives when you get beat and that is being totally honest about it. I, I do think there is always a way to, to if you are going to lose, a way to lose that I don't really enjoy or like, but just seeing my team out there um, and, and the run that I've been on and as I said we always knew did we think that we'd take the arm or unbeaten run into, into the back end of December I don't think so uh, but we grew in confidence and we've grew, grown in belief uh, hopefully it's a great learning curve for us playing, playing a, 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 just a, 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 a quality team and the unbelievable players and individuals and team that they've got here um, great learning curve the two clubs are, are, are light years ahead they weren't at one stage maybe about 20 years ago they were quite tight but then something happened and then off one club went and uh, another club re really didn't uh, sort of move that that forward at, at the pace that Man City have, uh, have. so we're, we're light years ahead but I didn't think we were the gap was was, uh, was unbelievably visible today uh, in terms of the uh, the tightness or, or, or the, uh, of the game, you know, whether they're better side in possession, yeah, if you've got world class players, and you know, you, you have to you have to accept and deal with that. But my team give it a go, which is uh, which is always just the basic remit that we have. Chris, um, Pep Guardiola was very complimentary about your team when he came in here. Will you be able to take any comfort from that? If not tonight, then in days to come, or does the difference just sort of? No, it's just that, as I said, you know, this is a promoted team in the Premier League. I wouldn't have imagined that, I think that their record against the promoted teams for for a number of years has, has been wins. Um, but I, I'm sure that not many of the promoted teams that they've been up against um, since maybe Pep's been here or, or even before of 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 maybe made the game as tight as what uh, what it was this afternoon tonight. So there's always a learner for us. Learn that our players, if they keep the shape and discipline, you know, and, uh, and make it difficult for the opposition, uh, we can give we can give anybody a game. I, I do think, uh, and I'm possibly chairman a fairly obvious club. There's there's, there's two teams that that are way ahead of everybody in the division, um, and obviously. Thankfully for us, we've got the, got the, another one in about four days' time. So, yeah, can't wait for that. <laughs> Chris, just a, just a quick one. Have you actually seen a video replay of the of the disallowed goal? Say, yeah. So I just wondered if you had a view. Yeah, I have. Yeah. From the, the angle you've seen or the view you've seen. Yeah, just and and you always when when every goal goes in now, we've got monitors by the side of the pitch. It sometimes doesn't do uh, uh, the linesman and the fourth official any favours when I've come rattling in their ears and saying you've got that one wrong and you've got that one wrong, but that's part and parcel of it. But yeah, we had a we had a close up of, of that and obviously the the first goal as well. And was your view that it was on the side? Of I just think it's uh, I just think it's you know these things are so so and, and, the, and there's no conclusive evidence really because of 
like I said, blurred lines and where they're taking it from and angles and whatever. And I'm not sure if they are going to bring it in and they're going to do it. Surely there's got to be a more clearer way of defining this uh, with all the technology we've got nowadays at our disposal. Just on that point, Chris, I mean, both sets of supporters at the same time were sort of expressing their dissatisfaction with this system, VAR. I think up and down the country, you know, we had 29,000 people at Norwich saying something else before VAR. Um, and today there was, there was a four-letter word before VAR. But these are proper football people, you know. Uh, and uh, and I've used usual amount of respect for, for Manchester City. I've got pals that have come through the youth team in the day, you know, in the in the 80s, the, you know, the likes of, you know, Beresford and Lake and, and all those guys that, that played. Um, and uh, very similar identity, both clubs in a two-team city. Manchester City and Sheffield United got quite, well, used to anyway, but possibly not now. But they're, they're always, you know, proper football people here. You know, Brian Kidd came up to us afterwards and he was a great guy as well. So... Um, so yeah, um, but do you, think, do you think it's reformable this system, or do you think they should scrap it? Um, I don't. Well, that's not my choice, and my, it's not my decision. Uh, I think it um, it has to it has to improve uh, because it's yeah again as as we talked about first question, first question, and it, eight goals, eight nine goals knocked off, and I don't think you know there is going to be goals knocked off. I'm not going to say that, that there isn't, but. You know where it's there's so much debate on every goal. You know every goal from any. You know this will be analysed yet again, and there'll be, you know, with different pictures from different angles and different lines and blurred lines. And where does it leave his foot or whatever? Uh, maybe um, I just don't think it's been refined enough to 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 make a difference. Thanks all. Thanks guys. Cheers. Thank you.